We lead a peaceful existence in the forest and we're happy. We have everything we need here. The trees bear a lot of fruit. And the flowers are magnificent. Here everything is beautiful and peaceful. We like sharing everything. We are all together. And we only hunt what we need. But before there were no strangers here. Today they're getting closer and closer to us. The Charawa are pygmies and hunter-gatherers. Their way of life has hardly changed since the Stone Age. The change has come quickly, and they now have tools, torches, and kitchenware. And they have started wearing clothes. <laughs> Most of their possessions were given to them by the park rangers. Rangers who were created by the Indian government to protect the Jarawa from the outside world. Since then, however, their way of life has been changed forever. Before, there were no metal pots, there were no metal dishes. Sometimes you have to walk at night, but it's too dark. In the past, we used to make candles from beeswax, but today we have torches. The Indians give them to us. They provide more light and save us from darkness. Today was all of that. Things have changed. Today, we can walk at night. In the early hours of the morning, the men go hunting. But there's a constant fear of running into outsiders. In spite of the rangers' patrols, dozens of armed poachers hunt with impunity on their land. There are armed poachers who shoot at us. They steal from us. They try to scare us. They want to buy white pigs from us. They set traps to catch them. They kill our pigs. Sometimes they even give us a little money or clothes. That's how they steal our game. Before we only ate pigs, but now there are hardly any left. We were forced to hunt deer for food. We don't know what to do anymore. We sit down and think about all that. We think about it all the time. After the wild pigs, it's deer. Their numbers have decreased dramatically since the poachers forced the Jarawa to hunt for them. Wild game is being sold illegally on the Indian market. But the Jarawa have even worse things to tell us. They're offering us tobacco and they want to show us how to chew it. It's not good for us. They give us alcohol. We don't want that either. But they still try and make us drink it. We don't want any, it's bad. But they try and influence us. It's like that in your world. The Jarawa have been given a tiny glimpse of our world. But the increasing number of tourists is starting to make them feel like exhibits in a zoo. Thank you. 
An Indian policeman is filming for a tourist next to a road that crosses the Jarawa Reserve. None of the tourists on the Andaman Islands wants to talk about these photo safaris, except for one guide who wishes to remain anonymous. 70 to 80 percent of Indian tourists who arrive in Andamans in their package, like it's always there, like you know, just to have a look, like how these jerwas are, like, and that became actually a commercial business for all these travel agents in Port Vale, like, and people are taking new photographs and they are selling their CDs, like, you know, uh, uh, naked ladies dancing. It's, I feel like it's, it's actually sort of an exploitation, like these innocent, aboriginal, primitive tribes, like, you know. At the beginning of the road are the same signs you will see in game reserves. Escorted by the Indian Army, dozens of vehicles cross the reserve four times a day. Inside are tourists who have paid to take pictures of the Jarawa. Tourist videos have been uploaded online. Nobody had ever asked the Jarawa what they thought, but we did. Takuru, one of the hunters, is the clan's spokesman. With tourism, money came into their lives. Over there, they gave us money to go shopping. We buy cakes for the kids. We buy food, sugar, for example. <laughs> if we don't have money, it's not a problem. But in the shop, if we don't have money, we can't buy cakes. <laughs> if you don't have money, you can't get anything. We don't like going on the road. It's very bad. We don't like going there. With the Indian government focusing on developing the archipelago, the plight of the Jarawa seems to come a distant second to other concerns. Especially now the Andaman Islands have become the most popular destination for India's new middle class. The ruling nationalist BJP party is denying the Jarawa the right to self-determination. Something the Jarawa say is unacceptable. We don't like the outside world. We don't want to have any contact and be too close to your world. We want to stay the way we are. Your work is bad for us. We don't like it. There are too many people. There's too much noise and no peace. Your world smells bad. We're at home here. This is where we want to live. Here we can find everything we need. In the evenings, we're together. We sit down. We build a bonfire. We're happy together. We have no worries. Despite repeated requests, no Indian official was willing to be interviewed. Included in the vision of the Indian agency responsible for the Jarawa is to discharge its duties and responsibilities on behalf of India and the world to this unique heritage by conserving the ecology and environment to enable the indigenous people to live as per their own genius. But the temptation to force the Jarawa from their unspoiled beaches to build hotels might prove too strong, whatever the declarations of goodwill the Indian authorities may have made. And with no clear policy or seeming will to protect them, how soon will it be before the world's oldest peoples simply disappear forever?
reporter Alexandre Rance joins us here. Alexandre, thank you so much uh, for that report. Um, clearly, you were going to places where people hadn't been before, and certainly no white people. You could tell by the reaction that people gave. How difficult was it to make this film? The area is a restricted area, so you, you cannot go there. The, the Indian Army is patrolling all the time, by boat, by plane. So this, this forest should be completely secured, but it's not, in fact. So we made our way inside this, this territory. We investigate for four years, and we've been there four times. Very small amount of day each time. And since then, the situation has worsened a lot. In 2014, the Jawa women have been abducted and raped by Indian men. And poachers go there, they give them alcohol, tobacco, and they hand the game, as you said. And now the situation is, is getting worse and worse, because the Jawa are only 400 people left. You can see a comparison with American Indians, what happened to them, Native Americans, when the, the Europeans landed in the 15th century, but this people is far more ancient. It's been there for many, many, many more years than the Indians in the what is now the USA. Yeah, the last studies revealed that uh, the Jawa came from Africa 70,000 years ago. And the, the, the history is repeating itself, uh, in fact. We can see that what happened in the Americas is, is going to happen now in the Andaman Island. And Alexandre, an ancient people, and they are protected, but somehow they're not being protected. Why is that happening? In, in fact, this territory is a, is a blackout. There is no media allowed there, no, you know, no anthropologists, nobody can go there to study the Jawa or to report what's going on. So this is why we get in to give the Jawa a voice. And the Indian government uh, stated recently that the Jawa want, want to join the mainstream, they want to become Indian, but in fact nobody e ever asked them if they want to do that. So this is what we did, and I think the, the answer is pretty clear. They said we want to stay as we are. Tell us the impression that you got of how the Jawa's life is, what their lifestyle is, what, how they live. It's a life of happiness and joy and freedom. It's just amazing to see that and also this is very sad to understand that it could be stopped very fast so yes it's a quite very uh, impressive experience and a feeling that the indian government is more concerned with developing tourism in this area than actually preserving this rare people yeah uh, a few months ago the indian government stated that they want to make port blair which is the local capital of the andaman the biggest port on the Indian Ocean. So this is not only uh, tourism, it's, only, it's also economical development and army development. And you know, there is very few places like Andaman Island in India. It's compared like the Maldives or Seychelles, so there is a huge economical and touristic potential there. And they want to exploit it at the maximum. And of course for the Jarawa that looks, uh, well, very bleak in the future. Yes. Alexandre, thank you very much for your film exposing a part of the world that, well, Nobody ever sees, but you got there for us, and thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Alexandre uh, Durance uh, with that report, which of course you can see again via our website, francefancat.com. This is Reporters on France Fancat. Stay with us.